This is the show where you take control and send in questions for me to answer. But as you can see tonight, I'm not on my own. I'm joined by my good friend from Hammers Chat, Gio. Gio, first of all, mate, how are you doing? I'm not doing too bad, given the circumstance and that. It could be a lot worse, I think. But uh, I'm, I'm going all right. I'm going all right. Um, keeping busy through watching stuff, if, if you like, over the last week or something. Uh, thank God for Netflix. What I'm going to do when the stuff runs out on Netflix, I am not sure, but I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. What about yourself? I'll tell you what you can do. Get Nicky to sign you in on his Amazon Prime. I've, that's what I've been doing. I, I, do you know what? You find yourself just watching loads and loads of stuff crap really didn't you i mean i've watched so much crap but do you know what i, I said this the other day as well you, you start to appreciate things in life didn't you like when you yeah. get things taken away from you that you know you're restricted you've got to stay indoors and it's, it's not great at the moment but look i know there's it's uh tragic what's going on at the moment but we'll get through this you know we'll get through it and um you know i said last week on a tweet i said you know imagine that first day when we can go back to football and we're all running towards the London stadium and smiling. And then five minutes after kickoff, it'll all be back to normal. But, you know, we'll enjoy it. Just having a few beers with your mates and yeah. singing a few songs. It's what we all miss. Yeah, indeed. It'll be a big party. Match day one, it'll be a big party, I think. And uh, I'm looking forward to it already, whenever yeah. that may be. <laughs> but look, uh, Gio, as I said to you, mate, um, what we're going to do for the next 30, 40 minutes uh we're going to start off with a question that I've put on there about Philippe Anderson, and then we're just going to take questions from the live chat. And then if you've got any questions you want to chuck in and we're just, let's just have a laugh for the 30, 40 minutes. Cause at the moment, you know, it's fellow YouTubers, it's hard to get content out, you know? So let's just have a little bit of a laugh. So yeah, right, yeah, Philippe yeah. Anderson, would you keep or sell him? Uh, I'm going to become unpopular already. Um, I would sell him, Ryan. I would. He's the one player this summer I'd be looking actively to sell because of the the fee you can get for him. I still think we could recoup most of our money. Um, he's not a bad player. I think he's a damn good player. I think he's a really good player. That's part of the reason I would sell him, though, because I've been more disappointed with him. And um, because you watch him during games or after games, you think who could have been better today. And often I, I hear myself saying Felipe Anderson could have been better. Because you know how capable he is. Um, we've seen games, you know, Southampton last season, Crystal Palace, where he's 10 out of 10. He's man of the match, the best player on the pitch and stuff. But I just find those games too small. They, they, I don't find him doing it enough. He's been here for two full seasons now. Well, nearly two full seasons now. So in terms of settling in and stuff, I don't think that's necessarily a, an issue. He's got to have settled in by now. If not, then I don't think he is going to settle in at West Ham or the Premier League. So uh, I would, I'd be looking to sell him. But the big thing he, is, who, he's, uh, his Premier League record. I mean, it's I think it's fifty-eight games, ten goals, eight assists. Um, for the money we paid for him, when you look at it like that, it's it's not good enough. Uh, he should no. be doing more. But it's not only him that's been poor. And and for me, I'm one of these player uh, fans. Sorry, I wish I was a player. I'm one of these fans that I actually like Felipe Anderson. I think that. He's one of these players. Yes, he can be lazy sometimes. Um, I think there's a lot of players guilty of that. Uh, but I just think with Philippe Anderson, he always, I always think when he's on the pitch that something can happen. He can always pick out that pass. or But he's not consistent enough. So I, I can see in a way if the money's right in the summer, you know, then, yeah, I, I would say I would sell him. But I wouldn't be too disappointed if we did keep him. No, I mean, if he was here next year, I'm, I'm not going to complain. Um, I think we'll see a good, solid player again. That's what he's been. I mean, even if we sold him now, it's not been a disaster of a move. It's not been a bad transfer. He's not a bad player. It's just not worked out perfectly for him. But this season, I've been more impressed by Fernals and Anderson, for example. And this is Fernals' first season, who I think Anderson's perhaps had a fairer shot than what Pablo has by both managers, actually. Um, but... Yeah, Pablo's impressed me more. You know, Yarmolenko scored more goals than Felipe Anderson. He's been injured for 90% of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, I just don't think he's what we get from him is enough for what we paid for him. And he's not someone I'd want to build a team around because I'm not confident. See, with Fernandes, if we built our team around him, for example, I think we'd see a, a really good Pablo Fernandes and would see it every week almost nearly every week but like a James Madison at Leicester you could give him the role and say you are our main man and every week you will bounce off that with with Anderson 
I wouldn't be very confident that you would get a 10 out of 10 Felipe Anderson, even if you built the team around him. It would just concern me a little bit that if Felipe don't turn up, your whole game plan sort of out the window a little bit. Um, but we do miss him when he's not playing. We do miss him. We miss his pace more than anything. And I just think if we were able to get someone else in who's perhaps quicker, I don't think we'd miss him as such. Um, it's, it's a tricky one. I just think he should be better than he is for us. Yeah, I mean, one thing that frustrates me a lot about Philippe Anderson is is the way sometimes he don't put himself about, does he? He doesn't get stuck into the challenges. And there's many times where, and I don't know if you notice it as well, that when he, he doesn't seem to go out for a header, he seems to look at the player and just hope that, that he's going to miss the ball or something. He's, he's very frustrating. But then some players are, are like that. They don't well, like I used, I, used, I, used, I used to be like that, right? And I, I, I hated heading the ball when I began. It wasn't penalty football or nothing. You know but, what, Theo? I used to head the ball when I was younger because I used to have a skinhead. I would never do it now in my uh, not, <laughs> not, the, not the amount that I spend on products now. Yeah, I, I just I just avoided the ball. When I used to play, the ball used to come high. I'd look at a way of either knocking the guy or trying to win a free kick off him, but my feet would never leave the ground. So I can't really criticise someone for doing that because you just don't like Kenny. But I do think he... I don't like to use the word bottles, challenges, but he does. So it's 50-50. He sort of ducks out and thinks you can have it. Actually, I don't really want it. You can have this one. But it's it's not a stick I want to be in too much with because some foreigners are like that uh, when they come over. To be fair, there's a lot of English players like that these days as well. They're a bit too, nah, I don't want to get involved. Um, and we've just noticed it more with Felipe this season because we're down the bottom and it's, we're expecting to scrap a bit. Whereas last season... You go off with a little bit because we were reasonably safe in the league throughout. Um, it, it, it's a funny one, but no, I'm still. I would I would sell them because this summer is also a, a difficult one, Ryan, because of all the money stuff that's going on because of um, what we're going through mm. in the economy at the minute. And I know stuff could still occur with the, with wage, players taking a wage cut and stuff, but I don't think there's going to be a lot of money in the transfer market this summer. So I think we're really going to have to. Box clever, and I do think Felipe Anderson is the one player that we could maybe sell for a fee that allows us to go and buy one or two players and upgrade the squad. So, what do, what do you think we could get from him? We signed him for what was it, 40, 40, 42, 45, something, something it was, like that. that. So, would you I, t- so would you around 30 between 30 and 35? Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't take less than 30 for him because he's still a good player. This isn't like I said, this hasn't been a disaster of a move. It's not like he's come over and we're trying to. It's not like Yarmolenko or Wiltshire where we're going to be sort of lucky if someone takes them off our hands a little bit because of the wages and stuff. He's he's a damn good player for a club. If said at our La Liga, I think he'd fit in perfectly over there. I think he would really step up a level, perhaps. Uh, I just think it's a Premier League. I don't think he likes the hustle and bustle of it. So thirty millions, the minimum I'd be looking for. Could, he's, he's probably been looking at the Italian league this year and seeing that Lazio are sort of near the top, and he's thinking, ah. Oh. I'm at the bottom of the Premier League, bottom four with West Ham and Lazio. Uh, you know, maybe he might want to maybe go back to Italy, maybe go back to Lazio because he, he always seems to post about Lazio on his Instagram. He yeah. still obviously loves the club. So if there's a deal that could be done there, um, so your sell, I'm sort of in the What's middle. What's your price? What's your price then? If 30 million come in for him, what would you say? Uh, yeah, I'd, 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 I'd agree. I'd take no less than 30, between 30 and 35, I think. We get a big chunk of our money back for him. Well, we probably haven't paid out that much, no. the forty odd million for him yet. So we get a nice chunk of money back, and as long as he we, he leaves on good terms, you know. As I say, I do like Philippe Anderson, but I think there are other players that we probably could go out and get that would suit the Premier League more. Yeah, I mean, you just have to look at Bowen. I think we've already got a player more suited to Premier League than Philippe Anderson, perhaps in Bowen, who was nearly was roughly half the price of what Anderson is. He's a couple of years younger than him as well. He's already got as much goals as Philippe Anderson has this season. He only he only joined in January. We've not been playing. What about week. the uh, what about the boy at Bournemouth, Ryan Fraser? Considering he's free, I think it would be a bit of a no brainer. Mm. Um, I think there's other players. You've got uh, that QPR boy in the Championship. I don't know how you pronounce it. I don't know if you pronounce it easy or easy. I don't know how you. It's E Z E anyway. I don't know. It's a three letter word. I don't know. I know you you're on about. Yeah, but I mean, considering my name's a three-letter word and people don't know how you pronounce that, so um, it's perfectly understandable. But I do think there's better options out there if you can recruit wisely, perhaps. Yeah, Gaz has just said, we are talking about Pamela Anderson, ain't we? Well, to be fair, Felipe's plan would 
been playing with two tits up front all year. So, yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we, might, we might as well be. But um, yeah, look, anyone in the um, in the live chat, if you've got any questions uh, for me and Gio, just fire them. I'll we'll try to go for as many as we can. So it can be about anything uh, West Ham related, obviously. Um, unless you want to know about us as well, you might want to know what Gio does in his spare time. Um, you don't want to know what I do in my spare time. But I do you know what I went for a bike ride today, Gio? I'm uh, you know, I'm listening. I hope you only to, went on one. I'm listening to the. Uh, I'm listening to the government and trying to get me 30 minutes a day. I went out for an hour. Well, I won't say that just in case the old bill come around here. Nick me for doing 30 minutes overtime. But, um, yeah, I mean, one other question that I did see this week, it was um, a poll on Twitter. It was, who is who would you rather have in their prime? The Canio, Payet, or uh, Tevez? Now, not, not Tevez. No, not Tevez for me. Tevez don't come close. I, I, I always say that Tevez had a great, probably 10 games for West Ham in the season. He wasn't great up until probably March time. But for me, I've been lucky enough to see Decanio play for West Ham and Payette play for West Ham. A lot of these people, are youngsters, never see Decanio play for West Ham. So for me, I'd have Decanio over Payette all day long. There's no denying what Payette done. Payette was fantastic and probably, yeah, he was was um, um. some of the goals he scored that season, his assists and everything he'd done for us that season. But for me, I'll have Paolo Di Canio in his prime over Payet. It'd be Payet for me. I think Di Canio was, he was special. I know people call him a maverick, but I don't think that's a good enough word to describe him as. He was a magician with attitude, if you like. There was something special about him. But with Dimitri Payet, you know, the guy come 17th in the Ballon d'Or, well, at West Ham, and that is remarkable in order to overtake players that are at Barca and Real Madrid and such like. And I do believe that one season when we had him, he could have moved to anyone that summer when he went He went to play for France. I think he could have had his pick. He could have went to Real Madrid or whatever, and he could have fitted in perfectly fine. I agree. I think he was the best player in Europe at the time. Yeah. So I think if you've got the best player in Europe at the time at your club, I do think he's got to be... He's the best I've ever seen at West Ham. I think only just, you know, but Payet and Di Canio are, are so far ahead of third place at West Ham, whoever that may be. I mean, you can make, you can say Tevez, but I would say Parker was just as good for us as Tevez was at the time. Tevez was better at Man City than he was at West Ham. Um, but it'd be Dimitri, I think. I think I would go for Dimitri. Yeah. No, yeah. Do you know what? It splits opinions. It split the fan base. And uh, as as you said, I don't think Tevez deserves to be mentioned in with uh, Look, Tevez was a great player, but for West Ham, I think he had 10 good games for us. Um, it kept us up, so fair play to him. But for me, uh, look, Payet, that season, I mean, at the bowling, it was a special season anyway. Um, and we needed a special player and, and we was given... Dimitri Payet, and you know when you watch the highlights back now, you don't realise it's not until you watch his his uh, greatest moments that you realise how good he was. I mean, I forget about some of the things he'd done in games where he just left people standing, and yeah. you know, and some of the go- for me, the best goal he scored in the West Ham shirt was the Crystal Palace free kick for me. I, that, I, still, I still to this day, and I was sitting in the Brooking Upper that day. I still to this day do not know how he got that up and over and in that top corner how he did. It was an unbelievable goal, and I, I'll never forget that goal until the day I die. Yeah, I, th- I think it's the Old Trafford one for me because De Gea was the best keeper, one of the best keepers in the world at the time. I don't think he is anymore, but at the time, De Gea was top five keeper in world football. He was 35 yards out as well. But the thing is, with these free kicks, you know he's, you know what he's going to do. You know where he's going. De Gea knew he was going in that top corner, yet he still beat him. And I just think it's incredible to strike a ball with that much power and curve at the same time. It's just unbelievable. Some players can do one or the other. They'll get a lot of curve on it, but the, the shot's quite tame, so the keeper can get across his goal fine enough. Others go for power, um, but it's down the middle. But to do both is just ridiculous. But when I was watching his highlights that like you were the last couple of days, I've you know we saw the, the, the farewell bowl end game on YouTube, but the club put that up and stuff. He just made other players better as well, though. I, Mark Noble went up a level just because he had Dimitri Payet in his team. Mark Noble knew, I get the ball, I just have to pass to this guy. That's all I've got to do. And I look good. Um, but he was just baffling how good he was. 
Right, let's uh, let's take some questions. If uh, the questions are going up so far, so if I haven't seen it, if just keep repeating them, and I'll uh, I'll try to uh, get through some. Um, right, let's see. Right, there's one here from JS. Question for you guys: Why did we sell Kiate? Um, I think at the time he, he he wasn't in the best form for West Ham, was he? Um, uh, I liked I liked him. I thought he was a uh, especially when we first signed him. He was a good box to box midfielder. Uh, he liked putting in a challenge, but for me, he just lost that bit of form. And I think that the money Palace offered at the time was too good to turn down. I was never his biggest fan, believe it or not. I was I, I always thought he was a top centre back. I was I used to get really frustrated that he just didn't want to play centre back. Because whenever he did play there, and when he played there for Senegal, I thought he was fantastic. But then for us in centre mid, I seen a player that I didn't think was very good at passing and too often didn't want the ball either. I'd watch him in games. He would happily stand next to an opposition player and he wouldn't really move. But that season he was good. We had Song and Noble. So we had two players that were able to pass the ball about. So he didn't really have to get involved in that. We could just give it to him and let him run with it. And then when Song came out of the team, I feel that's when he got exposed a little bit because Martin Noble needed someone to pass to. And he was really up to his standards. Um, but I, I was pleased to see him go at the time. I think it was the right call. And I still do. I think it was a mistake not replacing him. But I still think it was the right thing to do, selling him. Well, it'll always be in our history, will he? Because he, he, uh, he scored the first ever goal at the London Stadium when we moved yeah. there in the European game. So, well, let's get another question here. Uh, Ray Borum, question is next season, a reset opportunity for someone to jump into the top six slash top four. Um yeah, I'd like, well, I say this every preseason. I think we're going to be in the top six, but it's definitely. I mean, this. I mean, we don't know. I still don't know what's going to happen with this season. Uh, personally, I think it's just going to get scrapped. Yeah, uh, null and void. I think there's nothing they can do, and it's unfortunate. But um, yeah, I mean, it is. It's definitely an opportunity to. But as as you said, Gio, earlier, it's going to be a funny transfer window um, this year because I, I can't see many teams going out and spending. So it could be the same squads and. And one thing, if the season does obviously get null and void, and will and and they have to restart next season, will they start with the the same fixture list? Will they just start the season again, or because I hope not, because we've got fucking Man City at home first game, and you know we're going to lose about four or five nil. So, but then they're um, talking about maybe putting Leeds and West Brom into the the Premier League to make it twenty two teams, which uh, that'd be interesting. Because then what will they do? The will, will they get five relegated? Will five go down? I don't know. I, I don't like that idea. Um, I think it's silly. I think it's 20 regardless. You can't just take two teams up. Because why Why can you take up West Brom but not Fulham who are just below West Brom in the Championship? I think it's full of holes, if you like. Um, but in regards to Ray's question, yeah, I do think there is an opportunity for someone to get into that top six, really, if they splash the cash in the summer. Who? I don't know. Will it be West Ham? No. But I do think Wolves or Leicester can really cement their place as one of the better clubs in England if they want. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's tough, in it? Because I feel sorry for teams like, you know, Liverpool who have gone the whole season, you know, and they deserve the league. And then you look at teams like Sheffield United, Wolves, Leicester that have been in the yeah. top four all season. You know, it's... Uh, and. You look at Aston Villa. I mean, they've got a game in hand. If they win that, they jump out of the bottom three. So, if they, if they throws the league now and said, "Right, that's it," it's 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 a tough one, mate. It is a tough one, and um, I hope over the next few weeks we'll start to because they they can't drag it out that long. You just need to say, "Right, it's, we're going to scrap the Premier League yeah. and start again next season." Um, let's have a look. See if we've got any more questions in here. Uh, there's like they're just. Proper flashing up, right? What's this one? I, I ain't even looked at it, but it said Karen Brady on it. Do you believe Karen Brady that not having a home Boxing Day fixture since the move is just coincidence? Um, well, we've been in meetings, you know, we know full well that they don't want a game at home on Boxing Day, it's, you know, it, it's because of obviously Westfield, and which is a shame because growing up, it was one of my favorite uh fixtures going to West Ham on Boxing Day when we played at home. You know, because and even if we did play away, it'd usually be a London derby back in the days. Yeah. But no, you, it's a shame. It's a shame, but it's um from a selfish reason. I don't mind it too much because I can't get to a Boxing Day uh, mm. game, regardless of where it is, because of transport. 
Um, but it's just, it's just cut a bit of a deal with Westfield. We won't have any games at, on Boxing Day, so you can have your shoppers in. But at the same time, I do think you've got to pick your battles a little bit, and I don't want to defend her too much here, but for us to have our barriers open, they, remember when we first moved in, they had those barriers up beside the cow and stuff, and they just didn't open them. Now yeah. they're open before the game, so you can actually just walk through Westfields and head to the ground. Um, and we started to sort of say, you know what, we're going to play at home on a boxing day. I think those barriers would get shot pretty quick. So for our one game extra season at home boxing day, we'd sort of have to compromise our right of passage, if you like, for the other 18. Um, so I think it's a difficult position to be in because she's got to keep Westfield sweet. And that's obviously something she's willing to sacrifice uh, as part of a deal breaker, a gentleman's agreement, if you like. Yeah. It, as I said, though, it's, it is a shame, but it's, it's, as you say, it's what we signed up for, mate. It's, uh, yeah. Right, let's have another question here. Right, Teddy Rickwood, do we buy a striker to partner or replace Halea? Um, I think Halea deserves another season at West Ham. It's tough, you know, coming in your first season uh, in English football. Uh, some some strikers come in and they, they settle down straight away. You know, the way he started off the season, I think he got three goals in his first six games. And I thought to myself... Well, you know, we could have the the striker we've been waiting for for a long time, but he, he had a bit of bad form. Um, but as I said, so did the rest of the team, um, and he's got a lot of pressure on his shoulders. One thing I have, I do like about him, and touch wood, um, he doesn't seem to get injured, does he? No, you know, and with our record, you usually find that our big money signings always get injured. Um, but no, he's he, you know he, he he gets stuck in, and um, I think he definitely deserves another season at West Ham, another shot. And um, maybe, obviously, we've gone out and we've got Bowen in. So, and them two look well together when they've played. And you've obviously got Antonio up there with him as well. And um, sp uh, speaking of Antonio, obviously, you see the news today about his father passed away. So, obviously, all our thoughts and prayers with him are at this moment. Um, very sad. Um, yeah, it's just um, a sad situation, isn't it? Yeah, it's a tough time for a lot of people and without um, losing a close family member like that as well. So hopefully he's all right, Mikhail. Um, it's a long illness, I'd imagine. Don't say he was prepared for it. but it was the last seven years he said he's been. Yeah, so it's, 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 it's a long battle really, isn't it? So it's not been like a, an impact death, was it? It's something they've consistently been battling as a family. So, um, but it's still unfortunate to, to lose his dad in that. Um, as for Alair... I've got a rule of thumb, Ryan, and that is if someone comes to the club, if it's a domestic one, I tend to shorten it a little bit. But generally speaking, I give them a year. I, I wipe their first season off, basically. I say mm. that season's them settling in. It's not just the country and the culture, the climate and all that. It's getting used to your teammates, your tactics and stuff. You've got to get used to a lot of things. So with Sebastian Alley, I was prepared to write off this season. Has he been a £45 million striker this season? No. But... Could he be a £45 million striker? Yeah, I think he can. I think he's, he's got the ability. I was delighted. when I was ecstatic when we signed him. I've been disappointed by him on occasions this season. I don't think he's worked hard enough. Um, I think sometimes he's been isolated up front on his own, but others oh, just down to him. He just laziness. He didn't really want it enough. Too often I did see us go forward and he sort of, he'd given up by the hour mark. If he hadn't got enough of the ball in the first hour, the last half hour, you might as well just write off because he wasn't really fussed for it. He needs to improve next season, but I'm still hopeful. Um, one thing Moyes done, I'm not his biggest fan, Moyes, but one thing Moyes done was get the best of Marco Navic, put Marco Navic in up front and said, how do I get the best out of this guy? Let me work around it. I'm hoping he does the same with Alier, puts Alier up front and says, how do I get the best out of this guy? It's the common sense thing to do, really, because he's going to score your goals, which keeps you up. So we'll wait and see. But I'm, yeah, I'm he, always, he always seems he always seems happier when he's got one or two up there with him, helping him out because he's not a lone striker. We can all see that, and uh, yeah. he was wasted under Pellegrini. Um, yeah, because you know, it's, he as we said, he he needs he needs someone up there with him. But let's get another question up. Oh, right, this is a good one. What would your starting eleven be from our squad now and the relegation of two thousand and three? Whoa. Uh, that's a long question. Yeah. I, that's I, I lose sense of time. That is one that you're going to have to, obviously, we'll have to have a think about. But that that's a that's a good question. But, I mean, you've got Joe Cole. 
Di Canio, Sinclair. You know, there's probably at least three or four that would get in the team now, if not more, in their prime as well. Well, Dimitri Paya would be the first one in. Well, from our squad now. Oh, is it just those two squad? I thought it meant I thought oh, sorry, I thought it meant like the no, whole uh, the two, years. The spring season. Oh, okay. Yeah. The team we the squad we got relegated under 2003 under Roda. Would we have anyone from there in our squad now? Obviously, most in of them. Right. Yeah, I would, most of them. <laughs> I, would say there's, I would say there's not many from this squad would get into that one. No, no. exactly. That will probably be an easier question if you flipped it round. How many would get into that squad? But no, that's a that's a good question now. It's, um, it's it's one that you'd obviously have to have a little think about. So, uh, what we got here? Would you move Antonio to right midfield and put Bowen up top with Halea? Um See, I like I like the the three up front. I like yeah, like yeah. the Halea with one either side, and but I, I like it when you get players that swap. So like you'll get Bowen and Antonio swap during the game. So it you know it confuses the other team because. They can play both sides, uh, yeah. but you know, with Antonio, I mean, he's he's a difficult one because he got to that point where I think to myself, maybe he's at like he's sort of not. I wouldn't say not good enough for West Ham, but I think West Ham might have moved on from him. But he come back, and he's just that player that he seems to get his head down, and he works hard, and he's strong, and sometimes. He runs with a ball and I don't think he knows what he's doing. And that confuses the defender because they don't know what we're doing. We're sitting in the crowd. We don't know what he's doing. But nine times out of ten, something will come off. The other one shot being the one that he smashes over the bar from 30 yards because it wouldn't be the same without an Antonio one that smashed it over the bar. But I, look, I'm a big fan of Antonio. I, you know, remember when we signed him, it took him a little time to, to um, get settled in. But he's a great character as well. He's a great character. To have around the around the squad, yeah. If you could have a hybrid of Antonio and Anderson, you'd have one of the best players in the Premier League, wouldn't you? You know, Antonio's work ethic, his work rate, his endeavour, his power, and then Felipe Anderson's sort of technique and technical ability. Of that you genuinely have one of the best players in the Premier League. Um, I like the three up front as well. I I don't like the the flat four material because people get put out of position a little bit um, when we have no ball. Rice and Socek in there and we're sort of playing four midfielders. One of them sort of playing to the left a little bit and it's not really their position. Um, so I prefer the three-prong attack like you and then them two with Alaire. And I, that's what I would... If we were to play a game tomorrow, Ryan, if we were playing tomorrow, that's what I'd want to see. Alaire with Bowen and Antonio either side of him. That's what I'd want to see at four nows in midfield um, with Socek and Rice probably. But yeah, that's, that's how I'd like to see. I'd almost like to see us copy Liverpool a little bit more with that 4-3-3 kind of formation. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Uh, right, moving on. Our friend from Cross Hammers, a uh, question for you, Gio. Hamish McHammer, apart from footy, what have you been filling your time with? Oasis or Paul? Probably both. Yeah, combined, yeah. Liam Gallagher, <laughs> in it. <laughs> yeah. Liam Gallagher, Paul. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, that's what it's all about. I, I'm gambling on the... Um, the Belarus Premier League. I'm not even joking. I was watching Belarus Premier League football at the weekend. Um, what, still playing? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Belarus Belarus Prime Minister, when he got asked about the, the virus, he said, oh, vodka and saunas will sort it. Well, how about then? We start Belarus Fan TV. And we, <laughs> 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 I was going to say, we can't even get a flight over there, can we? But I'm sure we can do some... We'll find some Belarus fans. I don't know. I couldn't even name your team from that league. Bate Borisov. You'll know them. Who? Bate Borisov. Oh, yeah, 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 They've heard. been in European football quite a yeah. bit. You wrote the league. Didn't they play Arsenal? Yeah, I think they beat Arsenal as well once upon oh, a time. Yeah. Ain't no fucking surprise there, is there? Um, right. Charlie Walsh. Ask Gio why he hates Snodgrass. I don't hate Snodgrass. He, he's just... He's mucking me off here, Charlie. I just think... <laughs> Hold on, Charlie. I just think he's... I don't think he offers enough from open play by him. I think his set pieces is the best... He's the best set piece taker in our team, club. I've got no doubt about that. But in open play... The thing is, I like him centre midfield. If you told me he was playing centre midfield, I wouldn't have an issue with that because he's going to work hard. He's going to get stuck in. He's generally careful with the ball. But I just don't think he... 
he creates enough from open play, particularly when he's sometimes often playing right wing. And we've only got three attacking positions. We're giving him one. I feel like he slows us down quite often because he is really slow. Um, and when you look at the stats, as you know, Ryan, I like my stats. And when you look at them, he, do you know how many chances he's created from open play the whole season? So take away his corners and free kicks. Um, to put into context, Madison and Grealish are about uh, – Grealish is 55. Okay, that's Grealish, 55 from open play. What do you think Snowgrass is? Um, five. What's a good number? 55. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Yeah, yeah, you know what, G, I'm, I'm exactly the same, I'm in the same boat as you, mate. I, I think he's he's great at set plays, set pieces, corners and free kicks. But I think sometimes um, on the pitch, and it's not his fault, it's not his fault, no. you know, age catches up with you a bit. Um, and, you know, Premier League is getting quicker. Um, I just think sometimes he sort of slows the go, game down. And, and people could say Mark Noble does the same as well. Um, but, yeah, for me, with Snodgrass, I think he's a good squad player. Yeah, I wouldn't sell him. I would. I wouldn't sell him. There's, no. there's no because what would you get for him? A few million. It's not worth selling him. He's, I'd rather keep him and have him in around the club. I'd like to, if he does go into coaching and that, I'd like to keep him in the backroom staff once he retires as well. I think in terms of a character, I think he's fantastic. Um, he's not afraid to shout at people on the pitch either. Um, it, this is different to Felipe Anderson. Felipe Anderson. I don't think we get to see the best of Felipe Anderson every game. I think we get to see the best of Robert Snodgrass every game. He's just limited in terms of what he can do in the final third now. Like you said, it's just age catched up on him. I think he's got a lot to offer in centre midfield. Look, there's a reason Jurgen James Milner started off as a winger. There's a reason Jurgen Klopp don't play him in Mo Salah's position. There's a reason he plays him centre midfield and he covers left and right back if he has to, and that's it. Because that's what he's capable of now. And I just think we need to do the same with Snodgrass. I think we need to protect him almost a little bit and stop Asking him to do something his body just can't do. I agree. I oh, know I agree, mate. Right, let's uh got one here from Periscope. Bomb stickle, boom stickle. Do you think the club will go ahead with a new seating behind the goals? How big will the gap be? Um, I think they still have got plans to do it. Uh it might do you know what? Because of obviously with what's going on at the moment and they've obviously got things going on in the summer. I reckon that because they was planning to do it this summer, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that might get delayed. It might get delayed until the following summer. Um, for me, I don't think it's going to make much difference. I just think it means more people down the front are going to get wet. That's that's I, I do because they can square it off behind the goals, but then I think it's just going to look odd because the <laughs> other sides are not the other sides are not going to be squared off. So and you can't really square them off. So the only way to <sighs> We, as you know, they'll have to dig down and rebuild that to to get it right. But look, if it makes any difference to the atmosphere, then I'm all for it. I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm, it's not a bad change. It's more of a cosmetic one than anything, isn't it? It's just mm. it's not going to really make a, a too much of a difference. I'm I'm like you. I think it'll be delayed now because the the stadium, not the club, the stadiums who are paying for it, they're way to lose out on a little bit of money. I think with all the events being cancelled, you know, they had the the a concert in there in the summer, I think. Um Baseball as well. Yeah, so all that stuff's going to get cancelled. So they're going to miss out on all the income for this, the athletics. Um, so will that in is that income, was that income going to be used to put this in place? I assume so. Yeah, it's a, well, hopefully, you know, once this situation talks itself out, you know, it might become a bit clearer. Right. One here from James. Do you think we can hold on to Rice in the summer, or would you sell him on? Now, me and Nicky sort of debated this on uh, the live show last week, and um, I, I, look, I'd love to keep Declan Rice. I think Declan Rice is a future captain of West Ham. He's 21 years old. He's got, even if he stays with us to see out his contract, it, it, it'll only be 25, 26. It'd be still in the peak of his career. For someone at his age who's made over 100 Premier League appearances, is he's, he's amazing. He's in England national now. Um, but it also comes down to the money. I mean, if Chelsea are talking between 90 and 100 million, West Ham are not that sort of club that can turn that sort of money down. And we haven't got them sort of owners that will turn that money down. No, it's, so it's, it's a tough one. But for me, if I had a message for Declan Rice, I'll just turn around and say, look, just remember, they're the club that dumped you. They didn't want you. You come to West Ham, we give you everything, you know. I'm not saying Declan Rice is not loyal. 
well, people could turn around and say well, he, he walked out on Ireland and, and chose England. <laughs> so it's it's a difficult one, but I'd love to keep Declan Rice. As I said, I think he's the ideal replacement for Mark Noble. And in fact, I would maybe offer him the armband next season. Yeah. I, I'd be giving him the armband as well. I'd still have Mark Noble as the club captain. So if Noble yeah. plays, he's captain. But if Noble's not on the pitch for whatever reason, Rice gets the armband. I actually think, for the reasons we've discussed, what the, the way the world is and football is at the minute, and there's not going to be much money in the summer, I think this is going to stop Rice moving this summer. I think it was all set to happen. I thought Declan was playing fantastic before this happened. You know, we went to Man City, we went to Anfield. I thought Declan Rice was our best player across the two games and he was showing the world of football I can do against De Bruyne I can come to Anfield and run the midfield um, and I thought that was a big statement from him and I was a bit worried then I was thinking this is this is him he's, he's getting his move here but because of what's happened I'm not sure anyone can afford him because it would be about 80 million to get him out of West Ham I'm not sure anyone can it, maybe they could afford him but I think it would almost be a bit immoral could, could a club really front up that sort of money with everything going on around them. Um, there's already a lot of pressure on the Premier League in terms of what's your players going to do. You know, Levy right now is getting an absolute kick in because Spurs have put all their staff on fur- furlong, haven't they? So they're all on 80% through the government's initiative. They're getting a battering now. So could Spurs then go and spend 50, 60 million in the summer on one player? I don't think you could. I think you'd get absolutely hammered um, just because of the, the, the practices of it. So I, I think he'll be here for one more year. But thing, I think he'll be got price right. Yeah, the only thing that worries me about Chelsea is they haven't spent for a long time. And, and, yeah. and they might have that money there to spend. So, as I said, it's Declan, it comes down to Declan Rice at the end of the day. It's his decision. If if he wants to leave, I hope he leaves on good terms. Uh, I won't want him to, to leave on bad terms. But I'm, I'm the same as you. I can see him staying for at least one more season and then, and then we'll just take it from there. We've got a warning with Harry Kane this week. Um, he done that Instagram Live. I think it was an Instagram Live he was doing. I think he was doing it to, like, he was interacting with Spurs fans. And in it, he said about how he wants to win trophies. And if he can't do it Spurs, then he's going to go somewhere else. Now, he didn't word it like that. It would be very much implied. I will leave if I have to because I want to win trophies. That's the right attitude to have. And Declan Rice will have that attitude as well. Declan Rice has said before he wants to win the Premier League title. I am never, ever going to criticise any player, even a West Ham player that wants to leave because he wants to go on and further his career. Mm. As long as you've given 100% to the club, which Declan has, then I wish him the best of luck. And I know if he was to go to Liverpool, for example, and they were to go on and win the title with Declan and the team, part of me would be proud of Declan, to be honest with you. I'd be happy for him. i say, you know, some of you... You deserve that. You've earned your move. You go there and you do what you've got to do. And, um, I agree. I've, I've never had a problem with players wanting to better themselves because in the end no. you look back on on your on your uh, your medals and your trophies. You don't look back on your pay slips. You know the <laughs> money. You know the money's great. You know it, it changes their lives for not only them but their families. But when you look at when you look at some of these players, I mean, I seen Michael Owen on Instagram the other day, and he was doing one of them silly videos. You know when he's kicking a tea bag in a fucking cup or something like that. And um, you know you look around. He's what he's won in football. You know he won the Ballon d'Or. You know he's won FA Cups. He never won the Premier League. But you know all these players that you look back at you your memories and your trophies and that's what it's all about and as you said I wouldn't never stand in a player as well as long as they've done it the right way yeah they yeah, do yeah. It, hey. yeah, they yeah, do yeah. They didn't do it the pirate way and just down tools and just didn't want to know no more uh right quickly moving on Tim King would you like to see the rest of the season behind closed doors um no for me personally I wouldn't want to see it behind closed doors I think football is about fans and fans should be there uh, I think the players I think it's a bit. It's as I th- Nikki said before. You know, we've played. We're playing the games we've got left. We've played these teams before at their grounds, and they've had home fans because we could say, "Oh, well, they've had advantage because they got their fans," and we're playing behind closed doors. It just just wouldn't be the same, and I can't see that happening. I can't see it happening. I, I struggle to see how it can continue again. I think the season's been compromised too much already, Ryan. Um, it's just lots of little factors for me. You, Spurs is the biggest example. It's, it's difficult because we're West Ham fans. People are going to say, well, of course you just want to avoid it because you're down the bottom of the table. But 
I'd like to think I would be saying this even if we were sitting in sixth place or something because it's about the integrity of the competition. And players now have been away from football for so long. Obana, the other day, Obana said, oh, we're doing our stuff at home, trying to keep fit, but we almost need a mini pre-season. Once we get back together, we need to get up. Our fitness is right up and stuff. And I just think that the season's... It's just there's too many disadvantages. They're talking about this World Cup style camp and stuff. And I just think it's baffling that they would even consider such a thing because all it takes is one person to get the virus and the whole thing's null and void. But there's already too many disadvantages for me. Spurs is the example because we were due to play Spurs last Friday, right? They wouldn't have had Kane, they wouldn't have had Son, they wouldn't have had Bergwin. They would have had essentially had three of their first team strikers out. We play them in a month's time, two months' time. They're going to have all three. And I just think yeah. part of the reason football works is because over the course of the season, you have a lot of averages. You get some luck in some games. The next game, you don't get the luck in. It tends to even out over the course of the season. You come up against teams in form. You then come up against teams out of form. You have injuries, then you play teams with injuries. And I just think when you now, I think the law of averages is gone. I, I, it doesn't sit very well with me. Uh, and also... I would question players' motivations from teams that don't have anything to play for. So once Liverpool have played their two games, won the title, what are they playing for for the other five games? Nothing. They don't want to be there. Their, their season's finished. They've, they want to be somewhere where they could get a, a deadly virus and pass on to their family. Why would they want to be there? Um, so I just think it's, it's compromised. Yeah, it's 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 a difficult one, isn't it? I'm I'm ex- I, I'm exactly the same as you, mate. I think as you said there, we could be, play Tottenham in in two months' time, and they'll have a full team. Where we would have played them two weeks ago, um, but fuck it, we still beat them anyway with their full team. Um, right, we've got about another ten minutes. Uh, so if you've got any last minute questions, keep chucking them in. We're we'll trying to go through as many as we can in the last ten minutes. Um, let's have a look here. What have we got here, mate? What's this one? Can you give my dad a shout out who passed away last year with both big West Ham fans, Gary King, rest in peace, mate. Rest in peace, mate. Sorry for your loss, uh, Tim. Um, where is Nicky? Uh, Nicky will be on the live show on Thursday. I haven't spoken to him today. I think he's uh, he's on lockdown. Um, playing football manager, isn't he? Yeah, I think he is playing football <laughs> manager. Maybe watching this. <laughs> I doubt it. He only watches himself. <laughs> <laughs> we need to remember that there's more than just the Premier League and football. They won't be starting any sport anytime soon, which is true. You've seen all the, uh, basically everything, you know, has been called off. You know, Wimbledon's been moved now. Uh, the Grand National, I think, was due to be this month or next month. The Saturday. <clears throat> That's been moved. The, you know, golf, boxing, everything. It's, it's affected the... The world, you know, I think the only sporting event that is going, if you want to call it a sport, is is wrestling. You know, WrestleMania is, I think, still going on. Um, and the Belarus Premier League. Oh, the Belarus Premier League. You know what? <laughs> Who the thought that, eh? WrestleMania and the Bel- Belarus Premier League. <laughs> I'm, I'm not even joking. It's genuinely on. It's on Friday. Um, I've been learning. I, I now know some Belarus Premier League teams. It's, it's you, need, you, need to, you need to start up Belarus Fan TV, I'm telling you, mate. It's the future. <laughs> <laughs> I am funny enough. Look, why does Geo hate wrestling? It's, it's crap. <laughs> why? What, why would you not? You know hate what, it? I, this this was. I now I don't. I watch a lot of crap on the telly, right? But one thing I do watch, and I'll probably get bollocked for this, is I watch the only way is Essex, right? Now I always have, always done. Obviously, I've got my wife; she likes it as well, so we watch it together. Now I remember once my mate. Proper tried slating me and work in front of everyone saying, ah, you watch that shit. And I went, mate, you didn't come in yesterday because you sat up till three o'clock in the morning to watch men in their pants run around a ring. Right. So don't slate me for watching Towie when you're watching wrestling still and you're 45, mate. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? I watched wrestling when I was a child, but then yeah. when, I got about, when I got to about 12, I discovered what it really was. So I've lost interest a little bit. Um, I got hobbies. <laughs> uh, do you know what I'm the, I'm the same mate I, I used to love the WWF as it was called back then um, I, you know the Hulk Hogan's the Ultimate Warriors Big Boss Man and all them I, you know I remember as a kid my dad took me to the Royal Albert Hall to, to see it and you know that's when they were like the 
proper wrestlers. And then you had that sort of attitude era where you had uh, the Rock and Stone Cold and all that, and it was yeah. all right. But then it's just got. I don't know. Yeah, I that, that was my last. E- that was my last wrestling era as well. The Rock and Stone. Yeah, Cold look, I can see. Look, I can see in the comments. I'm getting a little bit of stick for the Tawi. Um, look, it is what it is. You I'll, know? I'll, I'll balance it up for. I'll help you out here. But I yeah. used to watch. I used so to watch. You watch Made in Chelsea or something? No, no, no. Geordie Shore. I used to watch Geordie Shore. I've seen. I've never watched that, and I've, I've never watched. Uh, the the only way is Ch- or Chelsea whatever it's called and I've I've never I've never watched that it's just one of them things um, look we we all watch things I was watching Liam Gallagher corn during the week <laughs> WWE more real than tell with better acting I ain't gonna argue <laughs> I am not gonna argue with that I'm not gonna argue with that <laughs> he's got you there he's got <laughs> he's done you hit. No, but, uh, Listen, when I meant Tawi, I meant Sons of Anarchy. I, I didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I think that's it, mate. Um, I think we've gone over our schedule. We said he was going to do 30 minutes, but it's uh, gone on for 45. But no, look, Gio, thank you so much for joining me, mate. Ah, pleasure as always. Um, Glad to be on. Give us something to do. Um, I was only going to be watching Jordy Shore reruns anyway. So <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough at the moment, mate. I mean, as... Like obviously you you run a, a YouTube channel as well as we do, and there's there's other YouTube channels out there that it's most tough at the time to 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 bring content. So things like this, you know, jumping on and um, just answering questions, having a laugh, and you know, it takes your mind off of things for. Yeah, I mean, another night. Hour, another, hour. I mean, me and Gons have been me and Gons have been playing flipping FIFA the last two weeks just for content. But the other night we did a. I did a video call with some, some friends and we played Scattergrays on video call and uh, it was a bit weird, but I come off it and I thought, oh, that's quite good, actually. It was a good way of killing half an hour. It was two hours long, but I thought, Jesus, thank God for that because sometimes I've looked at the time and it's eight o'clock. I go do something. I think, oh, it must be like nearly time for bed now. It's ten past three. You're thinking, time's dragging a little bit. So hopefully people have watched this because if they're listening now, they made it to the end, right? So that's 45 yeah. minutes to an hour of the, uh, the day you stopped. So thanks and if for you're, that. Yeah, and if you're watching it on the replay, you know, thank, I didn't realise we was live on um, Periscope as well until I see the Periscope questions coming up. So I did see um, Thomas Skinner was watching. He said, Bosh. Um, <laughs> I love that, bro. You've been watching his videos. Yeah, he's, he's he's entertaining. He's entertaining. He's a nice bloke. I met him uh, just before Christmas at a charity event. Um, really nice bloke. And I really enjoyed him on The Apprentice as well. So, um, oh, Don't tell him you watch The Apprentice. You're going to get abused for that as well. I only, only watch it just so I can see Karen Brady fuck up, but she never does. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brilliant. But yeah, no, it's Oh, it's tough during these times and I hope everyone that's watching, you know, I hope you're all safe and well and, you know, keeping in isolation and your families are well because it's, it's difficult times, you know. I, I I can't go and see my mum and dad, you know. It's, it's, um, it's no, t- I mean, uh, my, my, my brother had his first child this week. Um, so it become Uncle Gio this week. And um, no, my mum can't go see her second grandchild because my mum's got MS as well. So it's even worse for her. The common yeah. cold knocks her so she can't leave. So it's going to be about two months till she meets her, her grandchild for the first time. So it's just difficult times really. Yeah, it's, 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 it's definitely is my, it's definitely difficult, but Gio, we're, we're, um, we'll leave that there, mate. So cheers, Ryan. And thank you so much everyone for joining us tonight. Thank you Gio once again. And uh, yeah, don't forget subscribe to the channel, West Ham Fan TV, jump over and subscribe to Hammer's Chat as well. They do great work over there. Uh, always entertaining. And, um, yeah, we'll leave that there. Gio, one thing left to say, mate, come on, you on you irons. Good night, everyone.